This Phoenix Rising recap covers uh, episode uh, 5, otherwise known as um, Flash Feature 5, which was published in January of 2023, and it discusses memory management on the F-256 Junior and soon-to-be-released F-256 K system at that time. Um, in January, I believe, uh, Phoenix Retro was taking orders for the system, and they haven't shipped at that point. It probably shipped in February. Um, so this is a little bit before the, um, in fact, hold on a second. Yeah, in December, the concept of the box was just released, and um, Stephanie was just starting to advertise it. So it hadn't been shipped as of yet. Um, but but, the, but here we are in January talking about memory management on the then F-256 Junior, um, and this applies to the K as well. Um, this is a short eight-page article. I'll flip through each page and briefly discuss each of the, of the eight pages. And then we can touch upon, um, you know, a couple things here and there that are probably more applicable to platform capabilities and assembly language than Super Basic, which is what many of my prior videos have been based on. But, you know, I'll be branching out both into kind of some advanced development topics and also other topics that are part of my uh, self-proclaimed 8-bit um, wall of doom, which um, is, well, it's right here. You can see it. So I have a lot to talk about on this channel, but let's let's start here. Try and get this straightened out again. All right, fair enough. So um, in, in this article, we cover memory management, and we talk about Vicky's MMU paging. And in this example, there's a, a piece of uh, code that I wrote that uh, squeezes a 64K bitmap into approximately 8K of memory. And um, I'll explain as we get further into this. Um, the eight-page article begins with uh, a section called Balance by Design that talks about a conversation I had with my 12-year-old a couple of years ago um, where I tried to express to her the fact that there's this golden triad in computing where um, CPU, memory, and I.O. have to exist in balance or else, right, or hell breaks loose. You're talking about weight states, you're talking about bottlenecks, you're talking about throughput problems. And of course, I'm talking about um, computer science and, and systems. But um, it exists as well in, in this paradigm. Um, but I'm not going to read it word for word, but it, the punchline is that my daughter didn't want to hear it. And she went back to her uh, Nintendo Switch. Um, but uh, the, the premise here is that the 6.3 megahertz clock of the F256 systems, combined with the power of Vicky, with sprites, palettes, all these other features, is uh, a pretty good and, and high-performing system. And we'll investigate it here in this article. Um, I begin by speaking about um, bitmaps and the amount of uh, extraordinary amount of requirements from a memory perspective and memory movement perspective that they demand. Um, and in the case of the Phoenix system here, you've got even at the 320 by 200 pixel screen and a color depth of 256 colors of 24 bit colors each, you need 64,000 bytes of memory to support that, to hold the memory um, such that it can be displayed on the screen. And of course, as we know, 8-bit systems with typically a 16-bit addressing bus and certain addressing modes can only support 64K of memory, period, from beginning to end. That's address 00, 00 and 0 page up through address 65535, which is the very top of 64K from a uh, decimal perspective. So again, you're squeezing 64K into 65,536, otherwise known as 1,535 or 36 bytes available outside of that massive block of graphic memory. So that's the challenge, and Vicky's MMU will help solve it, and I'll go into it in this article. Um, there's three kind of, um, you know, I guess key points or bullets to this, and it says across the next seven pages we will discuss the MMU in support of the architecture, um, talking about extended memory, talking about the cartridge option, um, which at that point was just kind of announced. We're gonna flash back to the early days of the Apple II, which, um, in fairness, not a lot of people worked on or, or aware of or certainly not interested in at this point, but there's a lot of history there, and it's a very interesting platform and the basis for a lot of what was to come. Um, also, part of this article is porting a piece of Apple II code from something that was developed only two years ago, two or three years ago, to the Phoenix system, and that, that's a graphic example that uses bitmaps. So that, that's the second of three points. The third point is that um, bitmap graphics in general um, we talk about what I had to do specifically in order to, 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 to port the code. Um, so moving on now, page two. I won't touch every page, but there's a memory map here. 
that starts with um, the 64K addressable range, which is eight of 8K. And it talks about the fact you have 512K of RAM, 512K of flash. Each of these are broken into 8K blocks. Each 8K block, any 8K block can be mapped into the um, visible area of the 6502. As explained in the graph, not sorry, as explained in the super basic memory management or memory use uh, video, which is, I guess, seven or eight minutes long. I'll put the link below. Um, all of the graphic memory from a super basic perspective is held above this 64K boundary, which is great news. What's not great news is, or what's the challenge? The challenge is, in order for the 6502 processor to access it directly, you need to bank one of these areas of memory, probably right around here, page eight through page 15, into lower memory so you can write to it and read from it in what I call a terrestrial um, footprint. Now there are manage memory management unit commands, otherwise known as DMA commands for direct memory access, where you can set up and move between this footprint and the upper footprint. But here in this article, we're just talking about using the MMU directly to move pages in, manipulate them, and then have them paged out as the next page moves in. Um, so there's a lot of activity and paging that goes on this talks about it specifically. It's something to be very useful for you if you feel like writing a develop, developing an application that's bigger than 60K or 50K or 40K in size. Um, and there are a couple out there that are already tremendous. Um, I think um, Norman's Witch um, Rules the Night game is maybe, I'm gonna say 256K in size, the image. It might be 512K, I'll have to go back and have a look at it. Um, talk a bit about the RAM cartridge expansion. Um, which at the time was just being released. Page three, we talk about revisiting Apple's text and graphics for comparison. Um, and there's quite a bit here that um, should be interesting to, to most readers. Um, and I have a bunch of links in here if you access it online. It talks about shape tables. Before sprites, there were shape tables. And before that, there was Apple's trying to, Apple trying to figure out what to do about it and how to present shapes on the screen efficiently versus worrying about a bitmap that is just kind of 2D, and if you would draw something here while well, you're stepping on what was there, and what if you want to draw it back again? That's movement of a lot of data back and forth, and it becomes quite expensive. Um, we're up to page four now, I believe. Yes, page four. We talk about porting notes. This is what I had to do to convert it, um, and talks about you know, converting from Merlin to 64 TAS, creating a, a centering a, a window, um, modifying a couple of the routines that draw the horizontal and vertical lines, and address the, uh, addressing some other, other aspects. There's a platform comparison, which is not quite fair, looking at a system that might have been released in the 90s as a dream computer, um, compared to something that was released in 77 or so, 78. But um, it's all here to read. Um, there's a representation of the bitmap screen that talks about overlapping regions and some of the challenges there. Um, and I'm talking about 24-bit addressing modes here to some extent which will be useful to many people to kind of understand and correlate with regard to those putting 65816 chips in their um, otherwise 6502 system. So for those that are not aware, you can populate this with a, with a WDC 65816, which provides a 24-bit kind of flat addressing model, although the Phoenix deals with it a bit different, differently at the moment, um, and it's uh, quite powerful and really extends the capabilities. Um, we'll talk about a fetch bank routine that was written to fetch banks. We're talking about the, the, the pong ball versus a rounded ball. Um, and it goes on. I mean, I'm not sure I'm gonna talk too much about too much uh, else of this. There's performance issues. There's a math block, which is an interesting feature that was really just came into the most recent um, FPGA release, which provides a lot of capabilities. Um, there's um, telemetry, which is to say that we're, we're counting as we swap blocks in and out. We're counting those blocks swaps just for fun. We're using um, binary coded decimal mode of the processor to count how many of these uh, swaps are happening um, on an ongoing basis. And uh, you'll see in the example, which I'm going to capture on uh, with a capture card, so to speak. Um, I have a couple counters that are rendered in sprites that show you know thousands of swaps per second and they accumulate rather quickly such that you get up and go have lunch, go to the bathroom, I don't know, check your email when you come back, a million uh, bank swaps have occurred. 
It's really, uh, really fast. In fact, I'm looking to my left here. This has been running for about an hour or two, and it's 2.5 million bank swaps on the um, lower of the eight regions being accessed. There's 12 million bank swaps, and I'll put the, 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 the picture here on the screen um, that have occurred at the, at the lowest region of this bouncing ball demo. Moving along, uh, as again, BC, binary code of decimal sprites, additional information, interrupt use, which I don't think I'm using, I'm disabling in this in this application, I believe. Um, we talk a little bit about color, we talk about uh, the demo in, 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 in general, and then there's a, a personal story here, which um, I may go into just briefly. And the story is that when I was, I'm gonna say 16 or 15 or 16 years old, my, my library in town had um, a couple computers. Um, they were kind of new and they were expensive. And they had two computers. They had an Apple II that was well equipped, meaning it had a joystick that, let's see if I can reach here. It looks something like this, right? This is a Kraft, I believe. No, it's a CH Products um, analog joystick. These things were expensive. So the Apple II at school had one of these. It had, um, I don't know, probably 48K. And then next to it was a VIC-20 that was pitiful in comparison. Had a data set, had no games. It was just, nah, not really happening. Um, we would go to the library after school and play with this Apple, and we would play Choplifter on it and other games. And then we would sit down and, um, and watch video cassettes that they VCR tapes, actually, that my, my, um, that my library, and this is again the public library, not the school library, would import from England. And these were the computer program, um, at which I featured, I think, in one of the other super basic videos. And we watched, like, you know, week after week, we watched these and they were just really interesting. Um, the BBC Micro was featured uh, prominently in that, of course. Um, and, uh, and the point is that the Apple II is, uh, I'll say near and dear to my heart personally. I never owned one until probably, I don't know, first year of COVID, I decided to jump onto eBay and see what these things cost as I sat home, you know, not I wouldn't say bored, but interested in, in other things I never uh, quite had a chance to, to, to jump on. And I ended up eventually buying one and uh, the rest is history. It's, it's really an interesting platform, and a lot of what we use today is influenced by the work that Wozniak did early on in the Apple, uh, you know, company history. Um, so more on that later. Finally, on the eighth page of the article, um, this is the original Balls demo written by Stephen Edwards, and I'll talk about that a, a little bit later. And then there's the Phoenix port, which is the minimum viable version, which has, I think, 48 balls bouncing, not just 30. Um, in kind of full color, this is a gradient color taken out of Peter Super, Peter, sorry, um, F256 manual. Um, and these are all bitmaps. Every single one of these boxes is rendered using a bitmap routine, routine by modifying memory directly. Um, in this kind of screen print, there's um, uh, counters rendered in sprites on top of the bouncing balls that count how many times the ball crosses into a region which results in a bank or a swap of the two uh, hexadecimal 2000 footprint or page of 8K memory um, out to fetch the new bank in. So you can see in this simple example, within probably seconds of starting it, there were 16,033 swaps to fetch this page so I can update some number of pixels in here. Then I rendered the next block, the next block, the next block, the next block. And any time one of these balls had to be rendered, in one of the eight regions of memory, um, a fetch was required. And Vicky's MMU was the uh, kind of catalyst to get this done. And as I said, it's extremely high performance. In fact, it's instantaneous. To tell Vicky to map 8K of memory into the hexadecimal 2000 range, it's that fast. In fact, it's much, much, much faster than that because they're talking about one machine cycle. And the time it would take you to run one instruction in the assembly language, Vicky has returned by placing that magically into memory. And it's an extremely powerful feature. So we'll talk about that next time, but this is just a kind of a quick video review of an eight-page article published in January. If you're interested in this, I'll provide a link to the Phoenix Marketplace, and we'll talk more about um, you know, some of this in the near future.